We're not gonna do that. We're done. Yeah, I thought, let's do something completely different. So here we are. By the way, if you assumed that I hate CSV, you're very wrong. I love CSV. Just load a line from the file to the terminal input buffer and let's start parsing it. If you've got a fairly straightforward CSV file, you'll dissect those records with very little effort. Try doing that with JSON or XML without including a massive library that takes the dirty work out of your hands. So no, I'm fine with CSV. It's great. I love it. It's kind to my hands. It tastes like real coffee. Well, there you have it. It's also one of the most popular formats for data exchange. Virtually every single application supports it. Except the example spreadsheet that came with Borland's Turbo C version 2. And that's a shame because it's much older than you think. The IBM Fortran Level H Extended Compiler under OS 360 already supported CSV. And we're talking 1972 here. And the first version of Turbo C was released in 1987. That's plenty of time to add some CSV support, don't you think? It's also referenced in the 1983 SuperCalc Manual, page 735. Use the program Super Data Interchange to convert a SuperCalc data file to a comma-separated values file. Bummer. I couldn't get this so-called SDI program to produce anything remotely useful. But I digress. It took a full two decades before it was officially formalized by RFC 4180. In the meanwhile, a lot of variations had emerged, especially where the delimiters were concerned. Commas were replaced by pipes, semicolons or even tabs. According to RFC 4180, the use of these alternative delimiters is not allowed. Still, all the European Excels I have encountered use semicolons rather than commas. Probably because in Europe the comma is used as a decimal separator. Which is annoying if you intend to delimit your file with commas. Now, fun fact, RFC 4180 offers a solution to that. Simply enclose the data element with double quotes. Which in itself creates the next problem. What if your data contains double quotes as well? Next solution, double the sucker up. The consequence of all this ad hoc patching is that if you want to parse these fields, you can neither parse for commas nor for quotes. And if you do, you have to implement all kinds of corrective countermeasures to get it exactly right. But wait, there's more. Another smart move was to allow raw line terminators in fields. So now you can't even continue the parse. No, you've got to save whatever you got. Refill the entire effing buffer again and restart from the beginning. So tell me guys, when did you design this thing? After working hours, while knocking back your tent beer? Another thing you probably didn't realize, but all CSV files are actually Windows files. Every line has to be terminated by a carriage return line feed pair. But enough talk, let's see how it behaves in real life. I've created a spreadsheet with some information about computer screens and exported it to CSV. Seems harmless enough. Now let's try to read and list it. Note, we're working with 40H today. First we define a word to open the file. The only thing you have to declare is its name and whether the file is read, that is input, or written, that is output. What it leaves on the stack is a 40H file handle. If the file couldn't be opened, it contains an invalid file handle. The word error question mark adds a flag to the stack. When true, we can call abort quote to issue an error message and abort. If false, abort quote will be ignored and the file handle will be duplicated, so it can be used. Now all input is sourced from this file, and yes, it will leave an item on the stack, and later we will see why. And that's it, we're done. Now we got to read this file field by field, so we parse the line using the comma, just like we've seen before. And if it contained data, we write that string to the console, and we rinse and repeat until there are no more fields left. Now we got to read this file line by line. Refill reads an entire line into the input buffer, and returns true when it succeeded. If it succeeded, we ask our previously defined reads fields to parse the line. 
Note we separate each record with an extra carriage return. We're ready to glue all the components together. First we have to check whether file name was given on the command line. The program name is always the first argument, so yes, like in C, you got at least one argument. The second argument would be the data file. Conclusion, we expect two arguments. The total number of arguments is put on the stack by the arg n word. So we expect two arguments. Less is considered an error. In that case, we call abort quote to get us out of this mess. Our command line arguments are zero based numbered. So our CSV file is at index one. Now we know for sure that there are at least two arguments. We can retrieve it with the args word. We can feed it to our open file word and subsequently call read records. When we are all done, remember that value we left on the stack? That was the file handle. So all we got to do is call the close word. And it will use that value to close the file. Easy as pie. Here you got the consequences of CSV when the going gets tough. It's but ugly. Unusable. Now, can we fix this? Yes we can. Two additional lines and one modified one. That's all it takes. Barely an inconvenience. So let's address the differences. Yeah, two additional lines include the libraries. That's easy. Now, what do they do? Well, parse CSV takes quoted fields into consideration, so you get exactly what's between the quotes. But if it also contains double quotes, we're not done yet. And that's where CSV from comes in. That one undoubles the quotes in a field. Now we're done. Usually I define a word called field from, where I combine these words. And if needed, I can add the filters I deem necessary to perform the task at hand. And here you got the result. It's perfectly fine. But of course, the question arises, could we do better with less code and an even easier to parse format? The answer is yes, we can. The IENA registered such a format in September 2000. Its defector specification is the text top separated values media type. But note that fields that contain tabs or line breaks aren't allowed in this format. That's a bummer, don't you think? But the Library of Congress expanded the format, adding a requirement for escape tabs, carriage returns, new lines and backslashes, which made it much more universal. The now defunct website dataprotocols.org also lists a specification, dated May 2014. According to that same page, Jason Duzek is the original author. The specification itself is virtually identical to the one by the Library of Congress. And although the prominence of these distinguished institutions is not a dispute, it's not the same as an RC. I wanted it. I wanted it badly. Fortunately, I had already written a CSV writer for 4th. And since TSV is not that different from CSV, all I had to do is to write a routine to escape those pesky control characters and I was in business. Okay, I escaped a few more. Since escaping had to be done by another already available 40H library, that also unescaped those characters. And when I was done, what would it take to turn this simple CSV file reader into a TSV file converter? Just a handful of lines. Okay, we got to include the library. That much is clear. We take an extra argument, which is the output file. Now, here things get a bit different. The TSV writer requires its own open file word called TSV open. Note it knows it's an output file, so no need to specify that twice. Yeah, and when we're done, we have to close it with TSV close. What a surprise. And no, contrary to open, it leaves nothing on the stack. Let's fix the parsing routines. This time we won't write anything to the console, but straight to the TSV file. We write a field using TSV type and we terminate the record using TSVCR. I don't think that one is rocket science. And we're done. Now, let's try it out and convert our little spreadsheet to TSV. And here we are. It looks perfectly fine. Let's see if we can read it. Let's take our original CSV reader and see how much it takes to turn it into a TSV reader. Well, not much. 
just change the limiter and we're good to go. Now, since this one does not contain any control characters, we won't need to expand any escape codes. If we did, we'd need another library, one we already have, but won't need here. Anyway, it works just fine. There you go. By the way, let's assume you need another format. That's not a problem. We got more libraries. You can convert your file to Wikicode, or an HTML table, or Fortable, or JSON, or LibreOffice, or MS Office, or KSpread, and yes, even CSV. And they all got roughly the same API, except that TSV type is now called XLS type. Yeah, it's all very confusing. I'm so, so sorry. But anyways, ending on that positive note, I'm Hans Beesmer and this was back and forth.